uprisings, insurgencies, failed states, civil wars, tangled alliances. Welcome to the Middle East. Amid the complexities, there are two common actors. Saudi Arabia, the majority Sunni Muslim kingdom, and Iran, the home of Shiite Islam. Adversaries for nearly 40 years, locked in a cold war for geopolitical, economic, and sectarian influence. Now, new leadership in Saudi Arabia is pushing a more aggressive approach to Iran, emboldened by the Trump administration's similar rhetoric. Iran, in response, has warned Saudi Arabia against its hawkishness, and many fear that tensions could escalate further. There are four key areas in their proxy conflict. Yemen had for years been in the Saudi sphere of influence. Saudi Arabia entered the war in Yemen after the Houthis, a Shiite-linked militant group supported by Iran, took control of Yemen's capital, Sana'a. It launched airstrikes, a ground offensive, and restricted access by sea. More than 10,000 civilians have died. There's widespread hunger and a cholera epidemic. And despite Saudi Arabia's firepower, there's no clear sign of a resolution. Saudi Arabia recently intercepted a ballistic missile launched by the Houthis at the Saudi capital, Riyadh. The Saudis accused Iran of supplying the missile, which the Houthis and Iran deny. Saudi Arabia called it a blatant act of military aggression. In Syria, Iran has long been an important ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, who's from a minority Shiite sect and rules over a majority Sunni state. An uprising in Syria grew out of discontent with Assad. Syrian security forces responded with violence, and the rebellion took up arms, turning it into a civil war. The Saudis backed the rebels, most of whom are from the country's Sunni population. The kingdom wanted Assad to be removed from power. Iran provided the Assad regime with elite forces, intelligence, and training. Nearly half a million people have been killed, and millions more displaced, the worst refugee crisis since World War II. Now, Assad looks set to stay in power, a win for Iran. So Saudi Arabia is attempting to project power elsewhere. In Iraq, the Shiite-led government was threatened by the rise of Islamic State, a Sunni extremist group. At the height of its power, ISIS overran most Sunni-majority areas, including the cities of Fallujah, Mosul, and Tikrit. Iran backed Iraqi Shiite militias to fight ISIS. They've been instrumental in its defeat. Iraq is one of the few countries allied with both Iran and the U.S., who is a Saudi ally. The U.S. and Saudi Arabia want to turn Iraq away from Iran. The U.S. is concerned that Iran has taken advantage of gains against ISIS in Iraq to expand its influence. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia is trying to forge warmer ties with the Iraqi government. But Iran has powerful allies in Iraqi politics who could undermine those efforts. In Lebanon, a political crisis. Prime Minister Saad Hariri abruptly resigned recently while in Saudi Arabia. As he stepped down, he criticized Iran and its powerful Lebanese proxy, Hezbollah, the Shiite militia and political group, for fomenting violence in the region. For the past year or so, Mr. Hariri's Sunni bloc was part of a coalition government that included Hezbollah. Saudi Arabia felt Mr. Hariri's participation in government gave Hezbollah legitimacy. Sources say Mr. Hariri resigned under pressure from Saudi Arabia, and many in Lebanon believe he resigned against his will. Since returning to Beirut, he's put his resignation on hold, another startling turn in a crisis that thrust his country back into the middle of the regional power struggle. 